Okay guys, uh, my car's not back. Uh, the mechanic has to do the brakes. So today I might uh, do a video on how I save money on uh, my renovation on my house. But before that, I'd like to give a shout out to Khaled, Justin and Ethan for your support on Buy Me Our Cat Food. It's very much appreciated. Thank you very much guys, you're all legends. So in this video, I'll just take you around um, some of the places in my house and uh, I'll just show you where I save money and my thinking behind it um, at the time. Um, some things have worked out well, but some I probably could have done better, but uh, you do what you do with the information you have at the time and uh, I'll show you around now. So when I bought this place, I had a uh, budget total budget of 140 Australian dollars at the time, which is about 100,000 US. So the house was about 30, so I had about 70,000 uh, dollars to renovate, which is not a big budget for the size of this house. And I also had to set up the kitchen, which was um, going to take a lot of the budget as well. So this is how I uh, save money. So simple one here. You just have a look at the Shikwi plaster which is here. Now, to do this wall all the way up, just that part there, you're looking at $100. Um, because the way I do it is I lay it on with a textured finish. And there's two reasons I did this. Uh, you can save a lot of money on Shikwi by getting it nice and thin and putting the stainless steel over the top, stainless steel trowel, and uh, this material will last longer. But I tried it in one spot, and uh, when it's done too well and too smooth, it just uh, makes the house uh, look mismatched. So if it's just put on uh, gently rough with a bit of texture, uh, it saves you a lot of time, and it doesn't mismatch too much because uh, it's sort of um, not done like to modern standards so sort of like how it would have been done back in the time so the obvious thing here i've only shikwied halfway up the wall to go all the way up i would have tripled my costs so have a look at this wall it would have tripled my costs so when i did this part here i sat back had a cup of tea and i thought that doesn't look too bad why would i spend uh three times the time and three times the money when I can put the money somewhere else. So some people comment on this that it actually looks good, um, but it's actually a one third finished job. And uh, it's grown on me the whole time I've been here. Um, I think it looks good having the three colors, um, but uh, not everyone's taste is like that. But uh, if you were to go super smooth all the way up, it would have cost me three times as much and four times the labor. To get everything perfect um, it takes time so if you have a look at the upstairs in the cafe area i did the same over here on this wall but here this had existing plasterboard or gyp rock so i would have had to rip that off to match that and uh, i was running low on time um, and i just got some yellow Shikwi and put that over the top and uh, it looked quite good. So just to do this section up here, it really only took me an hour and about uh, maybe $80. So if I were to uh, take that all out, clean it up um, around the window frames, tidy it up, it's a two, three day job. And uh, I'm looking at a lot more money on material. So I say three days work and probably $200 just there. And uh, it uh, doesn't look great, uh, but it looks passable for, for having a cafe in an old house like this. And it uh, adds a bit of character and it saved me time and money. Stairwell. I hate these steep Japanese stairs, but to move these and put them going this way and going up into here, that's a $5,000 job. So. I do plan to do something about this um, if I ever become rich uh, and totally move the stairs all the way up. 
and uh, floor this over. But uh, it's just not, um, it's just not in my budget. So I just uh, shiku it up and um, every customer that comes in just has to be very uh, mindful to let them know that uh, please be careful with the stairs. Anybody that calls for a booking and they like to sit up here to see the view, they get told when they call that the stairs are steep and if they're elderly, that's when I use the room in here or they can sit in the Doma downstairs. So that was um, a compromise we had and only a few customers don't like to use the stairs, but uh, they don't mind sitting in that room. Uh, it's quite a pleasant room in there as well. So this is where the stairs will end up going, going down there uh, in, in due course. So people would come in here and walk up here along the oven and up into this landing area. So that's um, something I wanted to do uh, a few years ago, but um, over the last four years, business has been very hard everywhere in the world. So that will turn around at some stage and that will get done. Um, so I didn't have to spend money there and I could put the money elsewhere. So since I'm having a cafe, um, there's uh, one place you have to spend money and that's for people to park their car. If people don't have anywhere to park your car, you don't have a business. So to do this, it was basically just a driveway coming in. This was all filled with dirt. Uh, you can't have a business like that. So to do the car park out, uh, it was five or six thousand uh, dollars. That's an expense that uh, you can't compromise on. If people can't park their cars, it's all over. So here's the floor of the Doma. So this was uh, clay, tampered down really hard. Um, so I had to come up with a solution and uh, laying concrete super smooth and um, doing it like that, it's going to make the place look uh, odd. So what I did is I just um, got the guys just to lay the concrete in and I told them not to finish it properly. So it's all textured. So that uh, was the solution I did for here. So I only had to pay for the concrete and some labor. So to do the Doma area, it was probably uh, only $500. But uh, if I were to do it properly, I could triple that cost easily. So the original stones, I kept and just concrete around them. So it does have a bit of character. If I had a lot of money, I would have just extended the floor out here from there and all this would be under floor. So people walk in on a nice wooden floor, but uh, you're talking, you know, $10,000. Money that uh, could be better spent elsewhere. So old houses like this, they're freezing. You have to have some sort of heater. Um, and I know that I had a lot of uh, free wood around. And um, so this was a no brainer, but this was super expensive. And uh, I got this put in after I did the renovation, uh, $6,000 and the same for the flu. So that's a $10,000, $12,000 investment, but it doesn't make the, the room totally hot, but it stops people being uncomfortable. So when I opened, um, I just had a um, sort of a cafe menu, a standard sort of Western cafe menu, but this was always um, going to happen. And uh, the materials for the oven, the bricks and everything, five bricks. So I've got uh, four bricks. It's quite, uh, if you see the distance here, it's very thick walls and that saves on wood. It cooks better and also there's a there's a mass uh, when it gets hot and this makes the room nice and toasty. So I knew this was coming. This was a stopgap. So at the moment, this does 90% of the heating uh, in winter for the room. And this is more uh, decorative. Uh, looks nice, gives an atmosphere when people come in. So this room I use for 
English classes. That's my whiteboard. I do a couple of classes a week, but uh, this is where I save money. Um, so have a look at the ceiling. This was very, very high. I would have had to have, because of the state of the place, I would have had to do a cover anyway. So I dropped it down to the level here and I paid to get glass. So these aren't windows, they're actually glass and it's just got wood holding the glass in. So if I were to get a full double glass window, it would have cost me three times as much. But if you just buy the glass and uh, get them to do the wood, I'll just zoom in. So that's not part of the frame. That's just uh, bits of wood with the, the glass held in. It's not as firmly efficient as getting uh, one that's already framed, but uh, they do a great job. So that's uh, how I saved a lot of money on these on these windows. Dropping the ceiling down, it uh, probably cost me another five hundred dollars instead of keeping it at the height it was, which is another uh, meter. Um, but I've more than saved um, on that in uh, heating costs. So it's got uh, insulation on the top. And in this room, even in winter, it's not too bad. So flooring, I saved a lot of money on flooring. This is the original floor, floorboards. Now under the floorboards, there was absolutely nothing. So you can see where these have been cut. all different so what I did when um, the two boys that done the renovation when they were gone I uh, took these up very gently and I stacked them outside and I got them to lay just the normal tongue and groove flooring just the normal um, sort of what's it called um, chipboard flooring with the insulation underneath and I got them to put these back on so that saved me, uh, I've got three rooms, it probably saved me $2,000. And uh, I like these old boards. And uh, even though they're not flush when they're put back, you get debris in there. So you have to come on along and vacuum this up. But uh, if I had a lot of money, um, I actually would have carpeted my house. I like carpet, um, not everyone does. But uh, this made sense at the time because I needed to save that money um, because I had refrigerators and other stuff I needed to buy for the, for the cafe at the time. So this is not a long-term thing. Um, I, I do plan to get some decent carpet at some stage, but uh, at the moment, it's quite nice. I don't mind it. So with these houses, um, you get a lot of, because these doors are old, you get a lot of this happening. And uh, this is designed on purpose. So when the house shakes, the, these will slip apart and it won't break. But if that's flush and screwed or anything, any movement up and down, it will smash your doors. So these are actually um, a safety mechanism. So a lot of people will glue that all in and get it nice and tight. And as soon as there's some movement in the house, it all breaks. So what I do, I'll show you now. Is I just go like this. When it needs doing. And look at that. Done. So for 20 seconds work, once a year, you can keep the old doors. You don't have to buy new doors and you don't run the risk of ever having to buy new doors. Uh, if there's any earthquake, anything happens, that will just slide back out. So a lot of people will spend money on new doors. I think it's a waste of money. So the only new door I bought is this one. And uh, I got this one made and this one cost me $500. So it's not cheap. You can get uh, cheap doors but they won't fit these old houses. So just remember when you buy an old house uh, and you have to put something new in, you usually have to get it made. So for this, it's it's only a small door, but 500 US dollars, it's probably pricey, but that's the only way you can go. 
So this is the original door. You see me come out all the time, just doing that. So uh, same deal here, just have a look. They just slide out just with the movement of the house and whatever. Same on this side. So you can go and spend hours, get some other wood and whatever, spend half a day getting that door up to scratch or buying another door. Or you can just do what I do twice a year, which is this. There we are, ready guys. Done. And done. So for 40 seconds work, 20 seconds twice a year, you saved yourself on a door and uh, you've kept the original door. Looks good. And uh, down the track, when you get a bit more financial or whatever, you could probably do something else. But uh, that's how I save money. And I use it as a weather shutter for the door. So uh, snow, winds, whatever, it's not going to break your nice door. So in about three months time, that will start coming out again, whack it again, not a problem. So have a look at the outside. It's horrible, isn't it? Metal cladding, outdated. Um, the natural thing to do is to get the outside of a house looking good. Uh, that's pretty much the first line of uh, duty when you buy a new house uh, when you buy an old house but uh, just no budget for it uh, that will come later and I know that uh, with my cafe if the food's good the atmosphere is good um, it will eventually um, generate money for me to do other things so if I were to put any money in here I would have had no money to start the cafe and uh, this wouldn't have happened at all so even just to paint this People might say, well, you know, it's just paint. It's actually not because you have to set up scaffolds and you're just for the scaffold higher for them to come in, put the scaffold in and take it down when you're finished is $3,000. So just to paint that wall is $4,000. That's just not money I had at the time. So here's the outside um, on the side of the house. So have a look at these walls. These are mud, not much... Uh, rain gets in there to, to damage those walls uh, they're mainly original there's a couple of repairs along here but uh, in really tip-top shape and as i showed you at the start of the video i didn't go all the way with the shikwi which is this plaster so i had a, a bucket left and i thought i might just try it here and see uh how it comes up but uh to me it looks horrible so i stopped at that panel and i'm just going to keep it natural so i think it blends in if i were to do a renovation here i would use timber so there's no point spending the money and time to renovate that if in the future you're just going to timber over which is most likely what i'll do So here's the old uh, end goer. This was in really good condition and uh, we only had to take a few of these off and uh, pull them from elsewhere. So if you have timber that's good, um, try and use it and uh, that'll save money. This is not going to last too much longer. It's quite weathered, but uh, I think five years and uh, I'll just replace that at some stage. So here's the back deck. Uh, you'll see timbers here. When I told the boys um, just to lay the wood down, uh, the original floorboard down in the house, uh, they had timber on order for the floors. And what I did is I just gave them extra money to get the thicker one. 
So I'd have timber for the for the back deck. So I just gave them a little bit of extra money just to put this little deck together. So the floorboards, putting the original back on and just giving it a bit of extra money, I was able to get this deck. Um, so this is somewhere we, where we can work, put plants and stuff like that. It might not be forever, but uh, I already paid for everything. So I just paid a bit more and I was able to get this. So for people who haven't seen my uh, how to get free stuff in Japan videos, they're probably six months old now, but they're somewhere, you can find them. I've got a lot of timber um, from old houses and I actually used timber from a, a Kia demolition um, for the, my oven base. So if you have a look at the base of my oven, that, that is actually the beams from an old Kia that got knocked down and I got all that for free. So. When I built my oven, I didn't have to pay much, at least for the base part. Looks like we've got cats here. Good old. Good old. Good old. Where are you? There we are. <laughs> Good old. Good girl. So, if you can get free timbers, make connections, it's going to save you money. So I get people watching videos of mine and they say, oh, why don't you put all your junk away? This is gonna be raised beds. So I've got these, I've got these, and I've got some more around the corner. And these are gonna be raised beds because uh, I'm getting older. So the garden down here, I'm gonna raise them up to waist height. So when I do gardening for the cafe, um, it's better on our back, so. Although you don't like to see that, it doesn't bother us. To get timber for raised beds, uh, that's going to save me $1,000 at least. Um, probably next year when I do it or the year after. So uh, this is also recycling materials. This would have just gone to, uh, to the rubbish or whatever. And I'll just paint them brown and... Uh, they're fiberglass, they'll last forever, the rain won't touch them, I'll never have to maintain them. So, people might not like the sight of them, but uh, I don't care. So here's my K-truck in all its dirty glory. I've got some plans for these guys for a video. Stay tuned. Kuro! So here's the base of my oven. It uh, suits the the age of the of the house. So these are just these beams. So they're knocking down the house. I told them, uh, "Can you put these aside?" And then uh, I got my chainsaw out. And I just chainsawed them. So if you're just renovating an old house, if everything's perfect, all the joints are perfect, uh, it's although it's a better job, it doesn't necessarily look better. So this saves a lot of time. I just cut, cut, cut with the chainsaw. They're all different. Put it together. And uh, the oven's got character and it's solid. So... People aren't going to go, oh, that's not straight. Just doesn't happen. You're in an old house. Uh, so this is a good thing for saving time. And uh, when you're renovating, time is everything. So when we came, we rented a house for uh, two and a half months while we did this renovation. And uh, a normal renovation done perfectly with big budgets um, can take up to a year. And uh, we didn't have that uh, time um, because when you're renovating, um, you also can't work. So it's a cost factor. So if you're spending an extra day on this wall, an extra two days on that wall, an extra week because you want this perfect with all the stones and then you want your, your everything perfect. You want your doors perfect. 
um, you're actually paying a fortune um, to do this. If you have big budgets, um, you can just write a check, give it to the renovation company and go on holiday somewhere. So my advice isn't for people who have money, it's for advice of people who don't. So that's the situation I was in and this is uh, how I managed it. And as people can see, um, there's still a lot of work to do, but uh, it's functional. Uh, the cafe is up and running, the cafe doing all right. So I'm quite happy with uh, pretty much all the decisions I made. So uh, anyway, that's just some information. Um, you don't have to spend too much money, but just be careful with your time. You don't want to be uh, wasting time doing uh, jobs that don't really matter. So when I built this oven, I'm thinking ahead, my bathroom is just through here. And we didn't spend any money at all on our bathroom. Our bathroom is a concrete room. Uh, just with a, a nozzle, it almost looks like a prison shower. So we have not spent any money in there because we didn't have any money in there. But I know in the future, I want to buy my wife a really nice renovated bathroom at some stage. So when I built the oven, I uh, put some copper coils underneath the floor. So these run underneath the floor. So whenever, whenever the oven's hot, there's coils underneath here. That'll heat the coil and any water inside the coil. So I can feed the coil into the into the bathroom and I can have free hot water. So I can have my fire in here. That also heats the hot water that comes through here in a, like a hydronic system. So I might not ever use it. I might just end up cutting that off, but for $80 worth of copper, I've got an option. Um, but if I put the oven down, that is never an option. You can't just take the oven up and, and put it underneath. So little things I've sort of thought of in the future that could be a waste of money, like this one. But uh, for $80, who knows what will happen. So if you start a business out in a rural area, you're not uh, in a high traffic zone. So if you're on a main road, you need a big sign. You need um, stuff for people to look at uh, so people can pull in, your passing traffic can pull in. But anybody coming to my cafe already knows where it is. So to put a big sign somewhere is just the biggest waste of money. So it's not like people are, are driving past here going somewhere else. I've seen uh, cafes and restaurants out in the middle of nowhere that you would never drive past unless you intentionally went there and they've got two thousand dollar signs out the front of their cafe and uh just makes no sense there's my sign it's just an old uh coffee table and uh my friend did that so i could take that off and it's not even going to matter people know where i am Putting a $2,000 sign here is absolutely ridiculous. But people do it because uh, they don't think. So anyway, guys, that's just a quick little video on how I managed uh, my small budget uh, to do what we've done. Um, it's always nicer to have a big budget. Even people with million dollar houses have a budget. So everybody works into their constraints. It doesn't matter what it is. So that's how we did it here and uh, any questions put them in the comments uh, and uh, I might do another video if, uh, if people want to know about certain things. But anyway, as always, hope you like the video. Sir, let's go back home.